Hello, Algebra 1 students. Today we're going to do Chapter 5, Lesson 4, which is all about solving special systems of linear equations. Please turn to page 148 in your journals. On this problem, it says, does the system of linear equations represented by each graph have no solution, one solution, or infinitely many solutions, and explain? So let's take a look at A. As you can see, these two lines do intersect. They intersect at this point. So that means that there is only one solution for the system of linear equations. That solution is right here. Uh, so that means that the answer is going to be 0, 2. That is the solution for this system. Anytime you have lines intersecting, like we have here, if they intersect, you are always going to have only one solution. So if we look at the equations, y equals x plus 2, and the other equation is x plus y is equal to 2, I can take that, and if I solve for y on the second equation by subtracting x, then I see that the second equation is actually y is equal to negative x plus 2. So anytime you have different slopes, then you are going to always have the lines intersect. In this case, the slopes are positive 1 and negative 1. Let's take a look at letter B. This time I have two lines that are parallel. Anytime you have lines that are parallel, you're going to have no solutions. And if we take a look at these equations, we have y is equal to x plus 2 and negative x plus y is equal to 1. So if I move my x to the other side so that I can change into y equals mx plus b form, I get y is equal to x plus 1. You'll notice that this time I have the same slope of 1 but different y-intercepts. Anytime you have the same slope and different y-intercepts, the lines will be parallel. Let's take a look at letter C. On letter C, we have y is equal to x plus 2 and negative 2x plus 2y is equal to 4. But when we graph it, we get the exact same line. Anytime you have the exact same line, you're going to have infinitely many solutions. The reason why it's infinitely many is because all of these points, anywhere we look on the line, all of these points work. So 4, 6 works, and negative 1, 1 works. All of those points will work. And so you're going to have infinitely many solutions, especially because, remember, a line continues and goes on forever and ever in both directions. That's why it's infinite. So if we look at the equations, we have y is equal to x plus 2, and then we have negative 2x plus 2y is equal to 4. So if I solve for y on that second equation and add 2x to both sides, I'll have 2y is equal to 2x plus 4. And then if I divide by 2 all the way through, I get y is equal to x plus 2 you'll notice that this time we have the same slope and the same y-intercept. Anytime you have the same slope and the same y-intercept, the lines are exactly the same, and so you will have infinitely many solutions. We're going to skip page 149 and move on to page 150. In exercises 1 through 18, we want to solve the system of linear equations. Now, it doesn't tell us how to solve it. Remember, we have three different ways to solve it. We can either solve by graphing or by substitution or by elimination. Now, since I don't have graph paper with me right now, I'm not going to do the graphing. I'm going to instead either do substitution or elimination, depending on what I'm given. Let's take a look at number one. So the first thing that I notice in number one is that it's already written in y equals mx plus b form. So that means I can just look at the equation itself. I notice that I have equal slopes and I have different y-intercepts. That means I know that this is parallel, so there is going to be no solution. In number two, I see that I have uh, different slopes this time. So I know that the lines are going to intersect, which means that I will have a solution this time, so I need to find that solution. 
Since this is all set up for the substitution method, I'm going to go ahead and solve that way. So I'm going to take this and substitute it in for the y above. So I'm going to have negative 5x plus 5 is equal to positive 5x minus 1. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides and subtract 5 from both sides so that these cancel and these cancel. And I'm left with negative 10x is equal to negative 6. Divide out the negative 10. And I get positive 6 over 10, which is 3 over 5. So I know that my x number is 3 over 5. Now I'm going to take this 3 over 5 and substitute it back into one of my top numbers here, or one of my top equations. I'm going to do the top equation. Uh, so I'm going to do y is equal to 5 multiplied by x, which we found to be 3 over 5, minus 1. So if I make that 5 over 1 here, the 5s cancel. So I get 3 minus 1, which is 2. So that means that my answer is 3 fifths and 2. Now, I've already plugged it into the top equation. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the bottom equation just to double check my work. So y I got to be 2. That should equal negative 5 multiplied by 3 over 5 plus 5. So that changes to a negative 1 here. So we have negative 3 plus 5, which does equal 2. So we got it right. Let's take a look at number 3. Number 3 is not written in y equals mx plus b form. I could write it that way, but I think it might be easier just to solve this using the elimination method. I notice that the x's and the y's will actually both cancel out this time. So I'm going to add these equations together. I notice that the x's and the y's cancel out. That means that I have 0 on this side of the equation. And 10 minus 10 also cancels out. So I also have 0 on the other side of the equation. 0 equals 0 is a true statement. So that means that I have infinitely many solutions as my answer. Numbers 4, 5, and 6 are done pretty much the same way. You go ahead and solve numbers 4, 5, and 6 on your own. Pause the video and then turn it back on when you're done. For number 4, I got no solution. For number 5, I got infinitely many solutions. And number 6, I got one solution, and that solution was 1, 1. Please pause the video and check your answers. If you got anything wrong, see if you can find your mistakes. To make this video a little shorter, we're going to skip to number 11. On number 11, I notice that none, neither the x's nor the y's will be eliminated as they are. So that means I need to multiply by something on the top. I'm going to multiply by 8. And something on the bottom, I'm going to multiply by 3 in order to eliminate the x's. So that means that my new equation on the top is going to be 24x minus 64y is equal to 24. And my bottom equation will be 24x minus 9y is equal to 24. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract this equation. And remember, when we do that, we might as well just go ahead and pull that subtraction sign all the way through. So this becomes minus, this becomes plus now, and this becomes a minus here. So uh, the x's cancel out, negative 64 and positive 9, that would be negative 55y. And then 24 minus 24 is 0. So if I divide by negative 55, then I get y is equal to 0. So now what I need to do is take that 0 and plug it into one of the top equations. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the top equation here. And so that will be 3 times x, which we don't know yet, minus 8 times 0 is equal to 3. So the 8 times 0 disappears. And so I just need to divide out my 3 here. And I get x is equal to 1. So that means that I know that my answer is going to be 1, 0. Just to double check, I'm going to plug that into the bottom equation as well, just to make sure I did it right. So 8 multiplied by 1 minus 3 times 0 is equal to 8. So 3 times 0 goes away. And that's 8 is equal to 8, which does work. OK, moving on to number 12. I notice on number 12, I do need to multiply. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 6 so that I can eliminate the y's. 
So my top equation stays the same, 18x plus 12y is equal to 24. My bottom equation is going to become 18x plus 12y is equal to 36. I'm actually getting rid of both of the x's and the y's on this one. So I'm going to subtract these equations, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that subtraction sign all the way through so I can make sure that I'm not making a mistake here. And now my when I subtract those equations, the x's cancel and the y's cancel, so we have 0 left on this side. And negative 36 plus 24 is negative 12. This is false, so that means that there is no solution. I would like for you to pause the video and do numbers 13, 14, and 15 on your own. You can go ahead and skip number 10. For number 13, I got no solution. Number 14, infinitely many solutions. And number 15, negative 1, negative 1. Please pause the video to check your work and see if you can find your mistakes and fix them. I just want to quickly do number 17. I noticed that on number 17, I have the same slope and different y-intercepts. That means I know that this is going to be parallel, so there's going to be infinitely many solutions. On number 19, it says you have $15 in savings and your friend has $25 in savings. You both start saving $5 per week. Write a system of linear equations that represents the situation. Will you ever have the same amount of savings as your friend? Explain. So let's take a look first at you. You have $15 right now and you are saving $5 per week. So that means that your equation is going to be y is equal to 5x, because that's the amount that changes, plus 15, because that's your starting amount. Your friend has $25 right now and is also saving $5 per week. So that's going to be 5 per week, and your friend is starting with 25. So the question is, are you ever going to have the same amount? Now, if we were to graph this, they would be parallel. So that would mean, no, they are never going to intersect. So you and your friend will never have the same amount of money in your savings. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.